Hello and welcome to the show. You're watching Tech 24, France 24's tech show. Curing cancer is certainly one of the biggest challenges of the 21st century, but it seems like every day scientists are getting closer to reaching that goal. From the development of targeted therapies to the creation of innovative hand-free diagnostic apps, we tell you how tech is helping in the battle to cure all types of cancers. And in Test 24, we'll take a look at several apps that can provide information to cancer patients, but also help them manage the heavy side effects of cancer treatments. Experts agree that early diagnosis of cancer increases the chances for the successful treatment of a patient. And today, technology is playing a big role in building diagnostic capacity. One interesting device that is set to revolutionize healthcare worldwide is the Butterfly IQ. It was developed by a doctor who used it to diagnose his own cancer. It's nothing less than a revolution in medical imaging one that may well have saved the life of one of the doctors working on it. I noticed a little fullness in my neck, and I was going to ignore it, as physicians <laughs> typically do. But I realized I had an entire imaging system in my hand, so I took the probe, put it up to my neck, and looked down at the phone, and there was my cancer. That probe, the Butterfly IQ, which literally puts a unit in doctors' hands with the capability of probing any part of the human body without the need to send patients off for scans elsewhere, the image is appearing on a smartphone or tablet. It's a time machine. It conquers time. I got my diagnosis right away. It sped up my treatment. It reduced the amount of treatment I needed because I had a diagnosis early. I see Butterfly doing the same thing for millions of people around the globe. Since its launch in 2018, the IQ's already found fans around the world, particularly in Africa, where Butterfly has been training remote local health workers in Uganda and Kenya to diagnose a range of issues. That's a major step forward for half to two-thirds of the world's population, currently without access to such technology. And even in more developed countries, it's led to major improvements for doctors. Getting a cart-based device to a patient who needs an ultrasound scan or imaging set in a hurry is extremely difficult. One that you can just simply take out of your pocket, plug in, and you're ready to scan has absolutely revolutionized the way that I care for my patients. Rather than the fragile and expensive piezo crystals used in existing machines, the IQ uses a single silicon chip which combines the functions of multiple scanners in one device, and that means savings not just of time, but money. With every other ultrasound system, it requires multiple probes. So when a patient comes into the emergency room and they need their heart scanned, their belly scanned, their neck scanned, that's three different probes. And Butterfly has no plans to stop there. The company wants to upgrade the IQ with an augmented reality system that will help its users position the unit to achieve the best image possible. There you go. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello, Dan. Hello, Julia. Tell us more about other diagnostic tools. Well, there's an example right here from Paris. Uh, the startup called Prima has developed a diagnostic software which is based on AI. It uses the latest innovations in image processing and deep learning that enables a quick, safe, and accurate initial diagnosis. And this actually helps to gain time when compared to traditional methods. Now, Prima, which was launched by three cousins, has managed to raise 2 million euros from uh, investors recently. Now, let's talk more about a new ultrasound technology that was developed by scientists in Scotland that could pick up far more cases of cancers but also reduce the number of biopsies. Well, yes, researchers from the Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh used a new ultrasound technique to produce high-resolution images that have five to ten times higher resolution than the existing ones. Now, the process essentially consists of injecting tiny air bubbles into bloodstream and scanning organs so that the blood flow can be shown up to 0.05 millimeter in precision. Now, using this uh, highly precise images of um, blood flow and the blood vessels, scientists or doctors are able to map the networks that uh, enable uh, the uh, tumors to grow. So that's for diagnostic tools, but let's talk about new therapies that were recently developed by scientists that aren't always well understood by the general public. In 2018, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was won by two scientists for their research in immunotherapy. What does it mean and why is it so groundbreaking? 
Well, immunotherapy refers to the activation of the immune system to attack cancer cells. Uh, last year, James Allison and Tasuko Honjo won the Nobel Prize for uh, doing research on this particular subject. Now, we have to uh, remember that the white blood cells, uh, they basically, they attack the um, foreign cells or foreign bodies. Now, there are cells called T cells, which are a part of white blood cells. And these T cells have a protein which blocks their ability to attack these cancer cells. Now, Allison and Honjo, they basically developed antibodies that unblock or that inhibit this blocking mechanism, and that leads to the activation of the immune system or the T cells that attack cancer cells. Encouraging results were, uh, were achieved using this particular therapy. Dan and Jay Kattelkar, thank you very much indeed for that. Now, this year's Nobel Prize in Medicine is also a leap in terms of cancer therapy. It was awarded to three scientists for their research into how cells detect oxygen and how they react when the oxygen level is low in tissues. A breakthrough in basic biology wins this year's Nobel Prize in Medicine. This year's Nobel Prize is awarded for determining how oxygen levels are sensed by cells. Oxygen is essential for life. This prize is for three physician scientists who found the molecular switch that regulates how our cells adapt when oxygen levels drop. The work of Greg Semenza, Peter Ratcliffe, and William Kalin focuses on the hypoxic response, or when cells become deprived of oxygen. Diseases such as anemia, heart attack, and strokes are linked to low oxygen levels, as well as some types of cancer that seek out and feed on oxygen. A lot of our work is, is going on, uh, trying to understand whether there are other systems, the circumstances on which they operate, and the role played by this system in cancer, the, the role that enables uh, cancer to develop and grow, uh, for which it needs oxygen and, and for which it activates this, this system. In addition to this discovery leading to new treatments for anemia and stroke, it's also being used to develop new types of cancer drugs. Most of the chemotherapy drugs are designed to kill dividing cells that are well oxygenated. There are no treatments uh, that are approved to treat the hypoxic cells within the cancer. And we believe it's these cells that survive the therapy and come back uh, and kill the patient. Dr. Kalin says the findings are huge for cancer research. We now know that this molecular pathway is co-opted by certain cancers. And in those cancers, we'd like to be able to turn the pathway off. And we now have some new drugs that either directly or indirectly inactivate this pathway. Their discovery giving hope to cancer patients and others suffering from diseases affected by too much or too little oxygen at the cellular level. Now, Dan, as we just saw in the report, we often talk about new types of treatments, but we don't always talk about the progress that's been made to enhance the efficiency of treatments that already exist, like chemotherapy, but also like radiotherapy. And when it comes to radiotherapy, the French startup um, Nanobiotics has developed a first-in-class drug that can enhance the effects of the radiotherapy. Well, yes, uh, this uh, therapy essentially consists of nanoparticles that are able to penetrate cancer cells in a tumor, and they are able to deposit high levels of energy inside these cancer cells, which eventually get destroyed. So the effects remain quite localized. And there's another invention, this time at the University of Waterloo, to uh, locate the edges of tumors during surgery and remove them. Well, yes, it's called photoacoustic technology, and it consists of lasers uh, that send light pulses to both cancerous and non-cancerous cells. Now, these cells, they absorb the energy, and they send back sound waves, which are then uh, measured by, uh, by a device, and that's how it the researchers are able to locate precisely where the cancerous cells are. Now, this is done in real time when the surgery is on, and this is very important because uh, it helps uh, doctors to not only locate, but also precisely remove these tumor cells, uh, because it's been seen uh, in some cases that their uh, patients have to undergo uh, secondary surgeries in order to remove the missed uh, malignant tissues which are still uh, inside the body. Dan and Jay Kattelkar, thank you very much. We're going to move on to Test 24.
There are many smartphone apps out there to help cancer patients in their treatment journey. Dan, let's talk about ChemoWave, which is very comprehensive. Well, yes, it is a mobile app that is available for both uh, iOS and Android systems. And it essentially uses AI to help cancer patients manage their care in between chemotherapy sessions. Now, using this app, you can track, your sim track the symptoms, the activities, you can uh, also have medication reminders, and it also gives you some indicators to, for example, lower anxiety, and also certain things like maybe drinking water to uh, reduce fatigue. Uh, it also allows you to, for example, add more pointers, so it could either be your doctor visits, so it could also be other metrics like mood swings, pain, exercise, meals. So yes, it's a, a comprehensive app that really helps you to uh, to navigate navigate through, through this uh, uh, the time of treatment. And then other uh, other apps as well. One of them is called My Cancer Coach. Again, it has um, multiple uh, functionality. So for example, there's something called My Treatment Guide, questions for my doctor, and my appointments. Dan and Jay Kattelkar, thank you very much indeed for that. That brings us to the end of this special edition of Tech 24, but you can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you next time.